Hi everybody, welcome to Big Valley Living. I'm JJ. And I'm Michelle. Thanks for coming by. Tonight we're gonna make portobello pizzettas. Is that a good name for them? I don't know. Good is what they should be named. They're super tasty and they're very easy. So we'll meet you in the kitchen. Here we go. First thing we need to do is to clean our portobello mushrooms. Select mushrooms that have, um, oh, nice. As full of a cap around here that curves in as you can. Uh, a lot of times they're gonna break down a little bit and that's okay. But we need to remove these gills because if we don't, they're gonna sweat all over the place and just create more water than we need. So I'm gonna show you what to do. You just take, your, take a spoon, a little teaspoon or something, have a little bowl or something off to the side and save that for a vegetable broth later on in the freezer or you can put it out in the compost give it to your chickens whatever you want to do try not to waste it because it's useful for something okay so this is what you want it to look like on the inside if there's a little gill left that's okay so i'm going to go get the rest of ours done and then we're going to clean the outside of the mushrooms Okay, so we have taken a cookie sheet and make sure that whatever uh, pan you're using for the oven has sides on it to collect any juices. We're using a sill pat as a liner. Your next best bet would be to use parchment paper and last ditch effort, use some aluminum foil. But aluminum foil, you might wanna just put a little bit of something on there because it, it's gonna stick. The oven is preheated to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. So now we're just gonna clean off the tops of these mushrooms. Just get yourself like a paper towel. If you don't wanna use paper towels, that's fine. Get yourself a clean rag that you like to use only for food. Um, I don't really worry about the inside because I just scraped everything out. See, that's what I was talking about. These, that happens and that's, that's just the way it is. Clean all three. And then we're going to place them cap side up in our 450 degree oven. I don't put any oil in these at this point. There's no need for it. This can be a easily a whole food plant-based recipe and keto recipe because it's low carb and um, very, very satisfying. Don't you think, honey? They're really good. Okay. So we're going to top them now. While the mushrooms are cooking in the oven, we went ahead and prepared the rest of the ingredients that we are gonna to use tonight to top these little pizzettas. So we grated some fresh Parmesan cheese and we do a larger grate for that. We grated some nice fresh Parmesan cheese. We had leftover home canned tomato sauce that was already spiced with garlic from some chicken Parmigiana that we had the other night. So I brought that out. Had a few little pieces of salami in there. You could use pepperoni, sausage, or no meat at all. You don't need it, but we had it, and that's what we want. And then one of ours is actually, we're gonna use, we're gonna use some pesto. We just buy this at Costco. And if you're a single person and you don't think you're gonna use it in the time that uh, the date you know, is good, go ahead and freeze it into some ice cube trays. Each standard ice cube is about a tablespoon. So that's good for measure. And I'm gonna go check on my mushrooms now. So these were really thick mushrooms and we are at just over 10 minutes. Now what we're gonna do, and you need to do this, is soak up the juice that rendered off when it was in the oven. You might need a little more than these couple paper towels. Thanks, JJ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't have to be super dry, but you know, it's still gonna render off more water. So get as much out as you can. If there's some there, be careful, but go ahead and take it off. And now what we're gonna do is flip them over. Now what we're gonna do is put them back in the oven for just a few minutes to make sure that they're cooked all the way through. We went about five minutes. You could go a little bit less if you wanted them to be raised up a little bit more, but 
We like them like this. So now is when you get to do whatever you want. Note, we still have not used any oil of any kind, but we are gonna use meat and there will be oil in the meat. And there's also oil in the pesto. So the first thing you wanna do is put a little bit of sauce in here, just like you'd be saucing a pizza, okay? You don't have to go too crazy because as you can see, this is kind of a flat surface, right? A little extra garlic on that one. And it looks like we're gonna have a little bit of leftover sauce for something tomorrow too. Probably throw some on some zucchini at lunchtime. Yum. Okay, and as I promised, we're gonna have a little pesto. Pesto's a really good um, pizza topper. So I'm gonna stir it up just a hair, okay? Now, pesto has oil in it and that oil can be a problem. So after I get this spread on here, I'm gonna dampen it off or dab it off just the tiniest bit with a paper towel. It's still gonna kind of leak out, but that's okay. Thanks, son. If you make a regular pizza and you put pesto on it, you're gonna to wanna to kind of do the same thing. See all that oil? It's just gonna heat up and go all over the place, but the flavor's worth it. This is just a tip so you're not super messy. Right? Now, I'm going to put our freshly grated cheese on here. If you are whole food plant-based, omit the cheese, obviously. If you like to use the, you know, vegan cheeses, you can totally do that. Or instead of doing this, I would stop here, put some cold salsa on it, nice cold slice of tomato, maybe a little bit of uh, horseradish, believe me, it's really good, and then a sprinkle of something else. So that's all the cheese we needed. I don't even, we hardly used any, but we'll use that for something else too. And now we are gonna have salami on ours. So I'm gonna set that down. And I did slice it up a little bit just so that, kind of like on those little pizza breads, you know, you get a little bit of pepperoni in every bite. That was the intent here. And we're only gonna put this in the oven long enough to melt the cheese because everything is, you know, ready to go. The sauce has been sitting on those hot mushrooms for a few minutes, so it's probably almost heated through already. So, yeah, you can see the cheese already melting as well. So, this is such a fast meal. You throw a salad on the side or something, I'm telling you guys, it's really, really good. Okay, we're gonna put it back in the oven until the cheese melts. So we have one with pesto and two with tomato sauce. So we're each gonna get a full one with tomato sauce and we're gonna share the pesto. Now we're gonna put just a little bit of finely grated Parmesan cheese on top because you know that's gonna be really good. Put on this much or as little as you want. Again, you don't have to put on any if you don't want to. And it doesn't even have to melt all the way, you guys. It's, uh, it's kind of good to have that contrast of textures and, and hot versus cold and stuff like that. So there's that. And then you know what? I just can't not do this. A little bit of fresh basil on top. It's pizza. Here. <laughs> well, start to finish, that takes really about 15 or 20 minutes. And as you saw, there was room left on the sheet pan, so we could have made more. This is, these were really fresh and it looked good, so I just bought three. So, if you like this video and you try this recipe, please comment below and let us know what you put on your portobello pizzettas. Yeah, because be you can do be anything. Yeah, right? Yeah. We've done them all different ways, and it's a great way to kind of recycle some leftovers and just enjoy something. Um, it, it's, it's meaty, but it's still light, don't you think? Yeah. What do you think? See you later, everybody. Be kind. <laughs> <laughs> I had to give it a few minutes.